You may be seated. God bless your church. You know, uh, oh, I miss my father. I'm the eldest of the boys, and um, you know, uh, it's so funny about my dad's uh, passing because uh, <laughs> a couple of Sundays ago, um, mom said, well, hey, son, you know, uh, we're going to uh, come to church with you. And I just kind of thought, well, you know, I know there's such big fans here, you know, and I never really see them go any other church unless you guys are going somewhere else. And, uh, and she said, yeah, we're, we're going to come. And so they came and, uh, and it was cool, you know, but I never realized that that would be my father's last Sunday sitting in a church. Amen. And I never realized that you know, as far as really conversation and the, just a little bit that we talked, that that would be my last Sunday speaking with him. Wow. You know, see, you just never know. You know. We just never know, but the key about it is, is you got to be ready. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. And, and we're speaking about legacy, you know. My grandfather is here, and of course, that's my mom's dad. And yeah. also, my father's father was a minister as well. So I guess it was good that, you know, in, in the lineage yeah. that, that God chose Willie Tillman, the son of Willie Tillman, to be a minister yeah. and to follow in my grandfather's footsteps. Amen. Yeah. And so, so I just want to talk a little bit, you know, we, we, you know we're relaxing and, and we're going to get loose, but, um, but, but I, I honor you, Daddy. I, I love you just as much as my brothers and sisters and, and Maurice, you spoke well, you know, and uh, when we sang that song about walk around, we know that you don't have any oxygen. We know that you can walk up right, you're probably running with Jesus. They're probably holding hands running. Man, Jesus, I ain't did this in a long time, you know? And he's just running. They're just having a good old time up there. Having a good old time, a good old time. But, uh, you know, I, I said, uh, I don't know, I was just in my room, you know, just, just talking with the Lord, and then the Lord gave me something, and I, and I said, I said, Mama, Mama. I said, you know, because at first I, wouldn't, I didn't want to do the eulogy. I just wanted to sit out there. But I said, Mama, Mama, the Lord gave me a word. And I feel that I should be doing the eulogy. And like the woman of God she is, she said, okay, we trust. We trust what the Lord going to do with, through you. So, so, so here we go. Amen, amen, amen. We love you, Father. We love you, Papa. Well, what I'm going to be coming from is uh, 2 Kings chapter 2. And we're going to start with verse 1. And then we're going to skip to verse 11. And we're going to read through verse 14. Ooh, bless your Lord. And here's the word of the Lord. And when the Lord was about to take up Elijah to heaven by a whirlwind, Elijah and Elisha were going from Gilgal. Verse 11. Watch this. And as they still went on and talked, behold, a chariot of fire and horses of fire parted the two of them. And Elijah went up by whirlwind into heaven. But watch this. And Elijah saw it and he cried, Father, Father, and the chariot of Israel and its horsemen. And he saw him, Elijah, no more. And he took hold of his own clothes and he tore them in two pieces. But he took up the mantle that he, that of Elijah that fell from him and went back and stood by the bank of the Jordan. And he took up or picked up the mantle that fell from Elijah and struck the water and said, where is the Lord, the God of Elijah? And when he struck the waters, they parted this way and that way, and Elijah went over. So the title of my talk today is, 
my father went up, but it's time for us to pick something up. I'm going to say that one more time. Yeah, Willie Tillman went up, but it's time for us to pick something up. Amen. Well, the one thing about you'll notice right here off the top, the timing of uh, Elijah knew the timing in which he was to go. God had spoken to Elijah and said, look, sir, I'm about to take you home, but I need you put in a certain position. Amen. So he and Elisha began to make this trail on through uh, to, uh, from Gilgal and way to the place. Now, he came to the place of Jordan, but all along the while, this is what happened. They kept telling Elisha, he said, look, look, your dad is getting ready. Elijah's getting ready to go. Why don't you just tarry here? And he said, no, 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 no. Wherever my father is going in the spirit, that's where I'm going. Amen. Wow. Wow. And so, so they kept traveling on and traveling on. And, and the one thing is, before they came to the Jordan River, Elisha asked Elijah, he said, look, look, look. I know God is getting ready to take you home. I know that you're going up to heaven, but I have a request of you that you would bless me with a double anointing. Come on now. Now, now see, I knew that my father had an anointing on his life. See, I seen, I, of course, being a child, I seen the whole thing from A to Z. Because I remember back in the day when my father used to drink a lot and was an alcoholic and, and, and all those different things. But when the anointing of Jesus Christ came into his life, that man was changed. I knew he was changed. Because I see how God just started shaving the rough side of him. And see, that's what happens when you get the anointing. That's what happens when you come into Jesus. He begins to shave off some of those rough edges and begins to make those, those hard edges smooth, you know. So I see how God just began to do that work in my father's life. Amen. So he says, so back to Elijah. So Elijah said, well, would you please... Please, before you leave, give me a double a portion of your anointing. And he said, yeah, you know, and Elijah said, this is a difficult thing. It is a difficult thing that you ask, you know. But when you see me, and if you see me, then it will be granted unto you. Amen. So he knew the timing of his departure. He also knew the place of his departure. Amen. So they had to make this journey. They had to cross the Jordan and get where they needed to go. And sometimes when it comes to place, see, we can't regulate time and places in which God says, okay, it's time for you to go. Yeah. You know, it was so unexpected. I didn't expect my father to leave this earth. I didn't expect that this would be the last Sunday in which he would depart. But God knew the time in which yeah. he would depart. Amen. Yeah. Because watch this. See, our timing is in God's timing. Amen. Yeah. See, God knew that it was time for Willie Tillman to come yeah. home. And though we're sad, and though we're missing him, and though we wish he was here, but God says, look, it's time for me to call my son home. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Come on, put those hands together. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. And see, watch this. And so the same thing happened if we look in John chapter 11, and we're talking about Mary and Martha and their brother uh, Lazarus. Yeah. Amen. Right. And so what happened was, is Lazarus took ill. Now, you know, and we and see the, the, the sad part about being in earth sometimes is we can't control sickness and we can't control diseases, although we thank God for medical technology and all that other stuff. But sometimes things just come up on a person. Amen. Well, sometimes disease just come on you. Sometimes sickness come on you. Sometimes bad health come up on you. But you can't help that. OK, all we can do it's just cry unto Jesus, amen, when those things happen. So what happened was Lazarus took sick and eventually he died from the sickness. But what Mary and Martha did was is they sent a message to Jesus, amen. Well, See, yeah. I'd rather send a message to Jesus because one thing I know, Jesus is going to hear my prayers, amen. Because if you look down in verse 6, if you look down in the verses, it says, 
and Jesus received the message. So anytime you're crying out to God and you're in a situation and you need something just like my father did, he always cried to Jesus. Yeah. Because that's the one that can handle all things. Okay, thank you, sir. Okay, okay, okay. That sounds much better. <laughs> okay, so he's the one that can take care of everything, amen? So, but here, here was the thing that, that struck my curiosity. Why was it that when they sent the message to Jesus, Jesus received the message, but he delayed his coming? Now, I'm going to be honest with y'all. Sometimes that's very frustrating, you know? Because wait a minute, I'm calling you Jesus. I got a situation right here and I'm expecting you to come and do something, but you're delaying your time. Why are you doing that? I, I need you right now, Jesus. Have anybody ever been in a situation like that? Come on now. I don't know, I don't know what to do, but all I know, Jesus, is I, that I'm telling you to come. And he said, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I'm not coming right now. As a matter of fact, they said that he stayed there two more days. Now, what? I, I'm not understanding you, Jesus. But watch this. He said, if you look in verse 4, he said, of John chapter 11, he said, This sickness is not unto death, but the sickness is for the glory of God. And watch what God is about to do in the midst of a situation. See, see, we get so, sometimes we get so anxious and sometimes we get so unsettled because, you know, God's not doing his thing right here, right now. But God says, see, my timing isn't your timing, amen. As a matter of fact, let me, let me put that scripture right there. Uh, it's uh, Isaiah. Okay, watch this. Right here in Isaiah it says, for my thoughts are not your thoughts. Neither are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways. And my thoughts higher than my thoughts. See, Jesus knew what was going to come out of the situation. We don't know sometimes what's going to come out of the situation. All we can do is just pray and trust him and leave it in his hands. Amen. But Mary, them, they got all frazzled. And when, and when the man died, when their brother died, just like when our father died, then we said, well, well Jesus, if you would have been here earlier. Yeah. Come on, y'all ever said that? Come on now. If you just wouldn't have got, if you would have just gotten here on time, like I asked you to. Yeah. But you're sitting there taking your sweet time, and here it is, my brother already passed. Yeah. And then Jesus decided, he said, well, now it's time to go. Okay? See, somebody say timing. Come on. Come on, somebody say timing. See, timing is everything, folks. It really is everything when it comes to the kingdom. See, the scripture in uh, Psalms goes on to say, watch this. Uh, Psalms 31, it says, But I trusted in, and I relied on, and I was confident in you, O Lord. And I said that you are my God. Why? Because my times are in your hands. Somebody better say time. See, your time and my time and our time is in his hands. But see, we go through this life and we get so caught up in life that we forget whose hands we are in. Yeah. Yeah. Come on now. Come on now. That's why, that's why one thing I know, if you go to my father and ask him something, scripture is going to be in the mix. Amen. Because what he's trying to do is he's trying to help you understand that it's not about your timing, amen, but it's about God's timing. But what you have to do is do your part. And your part is maybe you should pray. Maybe you should get into the word. Maybe you should fast. But whatever you do, just remember that it's God's timing and not your timing, amen. And, the, and they were all shocked and in disarray when the brother left. So here comes Jesus on the scene. He says, I'm here. And then Martha runs out and said, well, Lord, if you would have been here, my brother would have died. And so Jesus was like, well, you know, 
you guys are not seeing the big picture. And then so on. Then, and then the other sister runs up to him and says, well, Jesus, if you would have been here, my brother would not have died. And then the word is, and, the, and the scripture goes on to say, and then Jesus began to felt their sorrow. Let me tell you, church, let me tell you, mama, let me tell you, family, Jesus feels your sorrow. Sometimes we think that, you know, when we think about God, that he's just somewhere out there and, and nebulous. But no, no, no. The word says that Jesus is an ever-present help in a time of need. That he is all-powerful, that he's all-present, and that he's all-knowing, folks. So you don't have to worry. Jesus is right there with you. Amen. And so, and so, and watch this. And then when you go down in John chapter 11, verse 40, and Jesus says, now watch this now. See, see, didn't I not tell you in, in verse 4 that this was going to be for the blind? And then he goes on to say, and did not I tell you that if you trust in me and you depend on me and you lean on me, that you would know that this whole thing was just a setup? Somebody say setup. Oh, come on now. Somebody better talk about that setup now. See, see, what the devil means for evil, God going to make it good, amen? See, we think that his passing was a bad thing. But no, it's a good thing because look at all of us in the house this afternoon. See, it was a setup. Somebody say setup. Come on. Somebody say setup. See, the devil don't like when people like us get together and, and we're in one unison and we're right here under the house of God. See, he doesn't like that. But Jesus says, look, it was a setup because what you're going to do when it's all said and done is you're going to see the glory of God. Amen. Hallelujah. You're going to see the glory of God. So now let me go back to my man, Elijah. So, uh, uh, Elijah, why don't you, I, I, got, I got my buddy Elijah in the house. Come on, Elijah. Oh, watch this, folks. Watch this, folks. So, so here it is, they walk in side by side. Well, Elijah, I, I, I know, I know the guy, daddy getting ready to take you home, but man, I, I, I really would love to have that double portion. And then now they get to the Jordan. And so what does Elijah do? He took the mantle, and what did he do? He struck the water, amen? See, what you got to do is, sometimes misery would come, and you would try to strike the water with misery. And sometimes sickness would come, and you would try to strike the water with sickness. And helplessness sometimes would come, and you strike the water. But see, it wasn't in any of that, even though that's a bad thing. But what made the water depart was the glory of God, amen? It was, somebody say glory? See, it was the glory of God. And when the man of God struck the water and they kept on walking, and they kept on walking, and they crossed the Jordan, then guess what happened? Then when Elijah took him, he dropped the mantle. Where? He Where? dropped the mantle and went on to glory, amen? Now watch this. So, so now Elisha comes up. Now, don't forget about Mary Martha. I'm coming back to that. So Elisha, so Elisha comes up and he picks up the mantle. Now, as you watch this now, ooh, whoa, 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 watch this. See, when you read the story, you would think that, I, let, me, let, me, let me just kind of, sorry, sorry, sorry. Sometimes I get so excited. Watch this, watch this. So watch this. So verse 11 in 2 Kings chapter 2. And as they still went on and talked, behold, the chariot of fire and horses of fire parted the two of them. And Elijah went up by a whirlwind into heaven. And Elisha saw it and he cried, Father, Father, right? And he began to tear his clothes, okay? Then he picked up, somebody say picked up. He picked up the mantle of Elijah that fell from him and went back and stood at the bank. And then verse 14 said, and he picked up the mantle that fell from Elijah. But let me hit this and then I'm going to come back, back to the mantle. Now it says in verse 12 that he tore his clothes. Sometimes when our loved ones depart, it brings sorrow and that's natural. It was natural that Elijah felt sorrow. It was natural that Mary and Martha were sad. It's okay. 
but the God of peace and the God of comfort came right on in and he had a plan again for the glory. Now let's get back to the glory. So, so Elisha picked up the mantle, amen? Yeah. Yeah. And you would think that all the power was in the mantle. But the mantle was just a tool. See, when Elijah picked up the mantle, he picked up faith. When Elijah picked up the mantle, he picked up the glory, amen? And watch this. And when he had the faith, and when he had the, the, the glory, that, rep, that which represented the glory, it gave him access, folks. Somebody say access. It gave him access. Well, what did it give him access to? It gave him access to supernatural divine power. Woo! Thank you. It gave him the access to use God's power to split the water. Amen. And sometimes that's what we have to do. When we get into these situations and we're standing at the river, God wants you to use your mantle. Now, what's that mantle? It can be supernatural love. It can be supernatural peace. It can yeah. be supernatural joy. But whatever it is, you got to use the supernatural to strike the water. See, the mantle is just a tool, but you got to pick it up by faith so that you can have access to the glory. Now, let me talk a little bit more about access. Let me talk just a little bit more about that. See, I had these here for illustrations. Now, see what happens is when we come into this world, the Bible says that because of the one man, Adam, and let me go back a little bit further, back to Genesis. See, in the book of Genesis, God, the word says that God created woman and God created man. And he put them in a garden and he asked them, he says, now of everything that you can eat, you can eat the bananas, you can eat the apples, you can eat the mangoes, you can eat the grapes. Boy, I love some mangoes. You can eat the grapes, you can eat everything in the garden, but there's one particular tree that I don't want you to eat of. And when you eat of that tree, surely you're going to die. Well, y'all know that old slithery serpent came up. And he deceived the woman and says, no, you're not going to die. For in the day which you eat, you will be like God. Amen. Now watch this. So, it went, so when the woman ate and the man ate, they picked up. Now see, we're talking about picking something up, okay? But what they picked up was sin and death. Sin and death. And every man, woman, boy and girl that is birthed in this earth, yeah. your birth was already picking up sin yeah. and death. Amen. But now watch this, what we try to do. Mm. And then, you know, we hear little rumblings all our lives about Jesus and God yeah. and, and different things like that. But what we try to do is, as we're growing up, and you know that we are, God already knows, we know we picked up this thing called sin and death. But what we try to do is, we try to cover our sin and death with goodness. Well, if I'm just good enough, and if I just do enough good deeds, then the Father is going to give me that access. Y'all remember that word access now? Then the Father would give me that access into the kingdom of heaven. But no, 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 no. It doesn't work like that because underneath all your goodness is still sin and death. But we just think that as long as we just cover up our sin and death with goodness. And you know what, Pastor? That can be for saved and unsaved alike. Because you got church and the folks in the church thinking, well, if I just, just uh, join the choir, I'm good. If I'm just a deacon, I'm good. If I'm on the usher board, I'm good. If I do all my little church rituals, I'm good. But you keep forgetting that underneath all your goodness is sin and death. Come on now. Come on now. And watch this. And watch this. And so now you think that you got all your goodness, that that's going to grant you or give you access into heaven. Well, you know, he was on the deacon board, so now we know he's going to heaven. Well, she was in the choir. Now we know that she's going to heaven. But no, 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 no. Because at the root of it all is and see that's sad 
because that's a big thing that's going around now that if you think that if you're just good enough if you do just enough good deeds, whether you're in the church or you ain't in the church, no matter what state you are, that because God's such a loving God and God's such a caring God and he's such an understanding God, that as long as I do my good deeds, check, uncheck, or check, or check, or whatever, then I know that I have access into the kingdom. But see, the, the, if I look back, in 2 Kings chapter 2, when the man of God picked something up, he had to pick it up by faith. Somebody say, by faith. See, there's some things that you just got to pick up by faith. Amen. Now, let me illustrate this a little bit further. Come on, Jesus. Oh, I got Jesus in the house. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Now, watch this. Oh, look at Jesus. Boy, Jesus looking sharp. Boy, that must be the 2017 Jesus. <laughs> Okay, so watch this. Now, now, I said that we picked up sin and death, and I said that we picked up goodness. But see, now, I said earlier, everybody's kind of heard about Jesus or had an inkling about Jesus, if you'd rather you know him, but everybody's heard the name. But let me tell you about the purpose of Jesus. See, you're carrying sin and death, and you're trying to cover it up with goodness. But Jesus came on the scene and says, look, my, pa my father has a plan, he has a purpose and he has a will, amen? And all of that is wrapped up in his timing, amen? Now let me tell you this real quick something about time. See, even though our time is not his time and his time is not our time, you got to remember God is not inside time. God is outside of time. But when he gets ready to answer you, that means he has to step into time to make, give you your miracle, okay? But watch this. So, so what we do is we carry around this thing, but Jesus is asking you to do what? To put all that on him. You're supposed to lay, number one, your sin and your death upon him. You're supposed to lay upon him all your goodness, amen, because we know that you're not good enough, amen. And so that's what Jesus came to earth to do, amen. And so he walked around and he went round about talking to all the people about the kingdom of heaven. He went around and was telling all the people that, yeah, I know you're good and I, and I know that you got all this stuff going on, but we got to take care of this problem called sin and death, amen. So what Jesus did is after he came to earth, what did he do? His purpose was to carry the cross, amen? So come on, Jesus, carry the cross, amen. And in him carrying the cross, being crucified on the cross, watch this. He had to cover all your so-called sin and death and all your so-called good deeds with the blood. Woo! Hallelujah! Oh, it's something about that blood, y'all. That, that, that's the power right there, y'all. That's the cleansing right there, y'all. I'm telling you, it's the blood. And he did it because he loved you and I. That was the, that's why he gave us the blood, amen? And then he was crucified on that cross for you and I, amen, where he took away all your sins. See, it was already done before he even came to earth, but he had to act it out, amen. He had to play the role of it, amen, and picked up all your nastiness and picked up all your bad habits and he picked up all the, the terrible things that you and I have done and he nailed it to the cross. Somebody give him a hand. Somebody give him a hand, amen. Amen. Now watch this. Now watch this. Now we talked, we said a little bit earlier about access, right? Well, see, for some of us, you know what we need to do? We need to let go of all of this and we need to pick up our cross. See, you got a responsibility in it too. You can't say that no one is not responsible for the truth that will set you free. Amen. This is the truth that will set you free, amen? Because he did this all willingly, amen? 
He did it all for you, amen. And all he's saying is, all you got to do is just pick up the cross. And you got to pick him up by faith, amen. And when you do that by faith, what that's going to do, that's going to give you the access into the kingdom because no man comes to the Father except what? By faith. Through Jesus, amen. By faith through Jesus, he is the access, amen. And then when you pick up the access, you pick up power. And when you pick up the power, you pick up the glory. Now the man picked up the mantle, amen. But see, in order for you to see glory, you got to have the glory, amen. The glory has got to be on you and I, amen. See, you just can't come to God any old way how you think that you should come, amen. It doesn't work like that. Unless you be redeemed, by the resurrection power unless you be redeemed by the glory of God unless you get that access and come through the man Jesus Christ you will not see the kingdom of heaven amen I don't mean that cruelly but that's just the truth and God wants everybody because you know what Here, here's the thing here's the thing oh this this was beautiful that God allowed me the opportunity to watch my father take his last breath my sister and my mom and I were in the room and I said Jennifer I don't think I don't think Danny's breathing and she said yeah he breathing he breathing I said Jennifer I don't think he's breathing and so now we start checking checking him and we remove the thing from the nose and 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 and, and, and we're shaking him making sure he's all right and then he just went <sighs> and went on to glory amen he went on to glory but here's the thing. See, you don't know when you're going to take your last breath. See, we, we get in our mindset that, man, we're going we're gonna to do this and we're going to do that and we make plans. And nothing wrong with all that. Ain't nothing wrong with cars and money and how. All, all that's good. All that. But first thing is first. This is first thing first, church. This is first thing first, church. And this is your access right here into the kingdom of heaven. Amen. Why? Because Jesus loves you. We just saying it. Jesus loves you. This I know. For the Bible tells you so. And I know that my father, my father, I've seen him many days reading his word. He was studying that word. He would always try to encourage you with the word because he knew I've already got access. I need to help some other folks gain access. Amen. That's why we preach the gospel. Amen. That's why we live the life. Amen. That's why we try to tell others. Amen. Because it's crucial that we live the gospel. Amen. That we live the truth. Amen. So you just can't be half doing it, this, that, and the other. You know, you just can't have one foot. I used to hear the old preachers say, you can't have one foot in the world and then one foot in the church. It's either one way or the other. Either you're hot or you're cold, amen. But which one is it? Lukewarm, you get spit out. Come on now. Amen. So my father went up, but he left something behind for us to pick up, amen. And the most important thing that we could pick up is the mantle called eternal life. We can pick up the word of God. We can pick up the truth. And when we have all these and we get into a situation, then you use that power to strike the water. Amen. You use that might to strike the water of adversity. See, oh, I'm going to tell you, I, and my, 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 my folks know and from, from church, and I've, I've told my testimony. I know that I personally have been through things that probably would have killed people, and all y'all could have said the same thing. We've yeah. all been through something that would have killed you if you would have let it. But you know what I did? I took that word, and I struck that water. And I took hope, and I struck that water. And I took peace, and I struck that water. And I took joy, and I struck that water and I took hope and I struck that water and I kept striking that water and striking the water and striking the water and striking the water till I got my breakthrough I got my breakthrough you can get your breakthrough but that's because I had access amen if you can't get no breakthrough if you ain't got no access amen 
So he meant for you to get breakthrough in this life, but he also meant for you to have breakthrough in the next life because that next life is going to last much longer than this life. Amen. So when it's all said and done and you breathe your last breath, like my father, will you step out of time and into eternity? Hallelujah. Come on now. Oh, hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. Glory to God. So as I, I, I'm landing the plane, because I know <laughs> I'm landing the plane, Pastor. You know, pastors will say that 15 million times. Oh, well, we're coming to the close, but we're coming to the close. Amen. Family. Yeah. Family. We just don't know when, when, who's going to be next. But I implore you with the love of God, be ready. Be ready. Be ready and be real to God. I brought somebody told me if you be real to God, God will be real to you. Amen. <laughs> be real. Live truthful. Amen. Because these are the things, these are the keys that gives us access. Don't let the enemy steal. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Don't let the enemy steal your access. I was told this, and this I was told that rules without regulation or relationship is rebellion. Rules without regulations or relationship equals rebellion. We don't want to be a rebellious bunch before the Lord, man. Because we, because the word says now, and you can see, just look around. The time is winding up, y'all. The time every day is getting closer and closer and closer. And I don't want to be shaking and knees knocking, wondering, oh, am I going to make it in? Well, I hope I make it in. Or maybe I might make it in. Because the bottom line is, I never met anyone that says, you know what, I want to go to hell. I never met anyone. Now, there might be some out there, but I personally never met anyone that says, you know what, I want to go to hell. Everybody wants access in one way or another that when they leave this life, that when they die, they will, they will go to heaven or paradise or whatever you want to call it. Well, there's only one way, folks. The way, the truth, and the life. He's already, he already did his part. He's already covered your sins with the blood. But are you willing to do your part? And once you do your part, for those of us that have already done it, are you carrying your cross? Come on now, let's be real about it. Are you really carrying your cross? Because sometimes when you carry your cross, there comes persecution with that. And sometimes when you carry your cross, they're going to make fun of you like that. And sometimes when you carry your cross, they'll stab you in the back. And sometimes when they carry your cross, they'll laugh and be glad that you're in the bed sick. And when you carry your cross, they're going to wish bad up on you. But you still keep carrying that cross. And you keep carrying that cross. Just like Jesus carried his cross, amen all the way up to Golgotha, all the way up to the mountains of the skull. And he crucified on that cross and said, Lord, don't charge them. Don't charge it to them. The work is already done, but you got to do your part. Whether you're in church or you're not in church, it's up to you to do your part. So I'm just going to ask real quickly, real quickly, real quickly. Y'all got the message. Y'all heard the word. May I have every head bowed and every eye closed, please. Just real quick. Real quick. Look, I, I ain't nobody special. Nobody special. But one thing I know is I know my Heavenly Father. Sometimes I call him Papa. Sometimes I call him Daddy. And he knows me. And just as much as he knows me, he knows you. And some of you might say, well, you know what, Pastor, man? Well, you know... I, I, you know, my, my, my walk might have been a little shady. I haven't been doing all the things that I should. And now's the time. Let's, let's get that right. Because I know my father was big on that. Live right, do right, act right. You know, those type of things. 
And then it may be some of you out there that says, you know what? I don't even have a clue about who this Jesus is. I don't know nothing about him. I heard about him. I got some mindsets about him. But, you know, but Willie, you made it clear what Jesus came to do. He came to pick up your sins, your death, everything that you owe. He picked it up and carried it for you. And all you got to do is just receive. Receive the gift called eternal life. Amen. It's there for you. All you got to do is just take it. So I want to ask if there is anyone first and foremost of you that says, you know what, Will? And I'm not going to embarrass you. I'm not going to call you. I'm not going to do anything. But if you say, Willie, I don't know Jesus and I want to make Jesus my Lord and Savior because you know what? Family, for those of you, we want to see Papa again. We want to see Willie Tillman again. Deacons and deaconesses and everybody that's in the house. You know, we all want that access into the kingdom of heaven when we leave this earth. So if that be you, please, with every head bowed, and every eye closed. I just ask that you just look up at me and you can put your head back down and, I, and I'll be praying and I just want to pray for you. Anybody? Anyone? 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 Look like all's clear. Okay. Okay. No problem. Anyone? We love you. And we see you out there. We see you. God sees you. Yes. 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 Okay, so we got that. And if there's anyone that says, you know what? I'm a Christian and I, and I love the God and I made some mistakes and done some things that maybe aren't right and maybe my life isn't all together, all that. Uh, Pastor, would you pray for me? And I'm willing to do that. And I want to do that. So if that be you and you say, pray for me, then let me see you. Okay, I got you. I see you. I see you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? So let me, let, me, let me pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we want to thank you for this day. And Lord, you know the ones that don't know you and you know the ones that do, Father. But the whole common denominator between the two is that we all want access into heaven, Father God. Just like you gave the man of God when he picked up the mantle. And just like you've given us when Jesus died on the cross, Lord, we all want access into the kingdom. So we ask, Lord Jesus, that you forgive us and that you cleanse us of our sins. Lord, it's your blood that makes us righteous. It's your blood that makes us whole. It's your blood that cleanses us of the sin and death that when we're all born into this world, we've been affected with. So I ask God that you would just be with these and I ask God that you would strengthen these. And for those that don't know you, Father God, I'm asking Lord that they will make that commitment, Father God, ASAP. And for those that are saying, I need a fresh commitment, I'm making it right now. Lord, let them stick to the commitment. And the only way that can be done is staying in the word and having and being cleansed by the word. So, Lord, thank you for what you've done. Lord, it's been an honor and a privilege to speak, I believe, on the behalf of my father, because I believe that this is what he would say. And I pray, Lord, that you would bless each and every one of us in here. I ask all these things in Jesus mighty name and all God's people say.